Welcome back, everybody, to another Minnesota Vikings franchise episode here where we will be playing against the Tennessee Titans. But before we jump into this game, a few other things we need to take care of, one of those being setting our focus scouts for this year. As it was really only during the season this one time we get to specifically choose anybody, and then once in the offseason as well. And let me jump for. Actually, I heard a thing. That if you just do it from your favorites and all, then it will. You're, it's more likely that you're gonna get more information. So let me run through here. I know we wanted to, to learn a little bit more about Gabe Wilds, and then one of the left ends, Kevin Hatchett. I wrote defensive end Arizona State because I forgot what his name was in my uh, notes, and then a DT. And Steffens, because he is the bigger bodied guy who might be a good run stuffer, uh, who's later, a later round pick. So we'll select him, confirm those three. Once again, that is Gabe Wilds, Kevin Hatchett, and Bryce Steffens. All three of which are going to be at positions that are going to be needs for us for sure. So hopefully we'll learn some good information from them. And I also wanted to uh, give Wangwu a contract offer. He's played extremely well for us this season. He's been just a utility threat for us, whether it's out of the backfield or in motion and, and a wildcat kind of formation. And he's only wanting two years, 4.6 mil. I'm fine bumping this up to a three-year deal and offering a little bit more in terms of a signing bonus for us. I would say let's just bump this up to eight. Oh, it went way too far there. So it's going to be an awkward one. We'll do three years, 8.01 mil. He should take that. I wouldn't see him not taking it. Great offer. Well, he's been a great player for us. So that is the only contract offer we're, we're going to offer really per the entire regular season, I think. Um, maybe offer Kelly later. Uh, and I would like to get Trevor Black and Tyrone Leary under contract for longer as they're just some young guys that we would like to develop, um, but most of the other guys are either going to let go or see uh, how the rest of the year goes and if they end up kind of regressing, and if so, kind of how. So Michael Pierce, one of those. We need to see about regression. We're looking to possibly move on from him. J.J. Watt will most likely retire. We will be moving on from Bradbury. I just His consistency is off. Uh, Darisaw, not sure if we're going to keep him or not. Uh, we might end up needing to because I don't know if we'll be able to basically draft two starting offensive linemen. Uh, so we might bring back Darisaw. He's only needing a two-year deal, so we can make that work. Kendricks most likely will be bringing back. Regression will probably hit pretty hard for him, unfortunately. Obviously, we brought back in Wangwu and DeCastro will be letting go as he will either be retiring or regressing most likely to about a 70 or less. So... That's the update for the uh, contract offers. Now it's time to jump into the game. Welcome to U.S. Bank Stadium, where today we will be hosting the Tennessee Titans. And they're a team you always have to be aware of. I mean, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, at least in this universe. As one thing to note, as you see here, that Reed Jr. is returning the kick today. Unfortunately, later in the week after Nwangmu signed his uh, new contract, he did end up straining his back, so he will not be playing today. Nick Robinson might be needing to use his legs a bit more today to help uh, help out round out the running game. The Titans defense is primarily built, at least at this point in time in this series, primarily built to be a pass stop team. They're really not that good at rush uh, run stopping, and that's going to be kind of our main 
way of attacking. We're still going to be passing the ball, obviously, but we definitely wanted to focus on the run today, both offense and defense. Going to try to dump this one off and somehow just gets past number three. That's Farley. Nice catch from Flanning. Turns up field and gets the first down. <laughs> Could have definitely been picked off. We got a bit lucky on that one. But yeah, I definitely want to stick to uh, run game first. We're going to be seeing a lot of Cook and within Wang Wu out, we'll be seeing a bit more as a nice juke and block from our receiver. Cook gets to the outside and down to about the 30. They're going to say 33. We are going to see a lot of running, probably a little bit of Kelly. We'll definitely be using a bit of our uh, quarterbacks uh, to run a little bit as well. We don't have any direct quarterback runs, but scrambling kind of runs just so we could get as good of an offense going to help out our defense since they have a couple key guys they need to stop. And would like to take a shot here, potentially. Uh, Leach would be the target. We'll see what the safety ends up doing up top. And I don't like it. Going to try to roll out here with Robinson. Receiver's going to carry the corner in, and somehow we're getting caught by a big old number 90. <laughs> that is the one thing in Madden that is kind of unrealistic. Well, there's many things in Madden that's unrealistic, but... How often you have a speedy guy who's getting caught by a defensive lineman. Happens all too often. Kelly comes in here, though, gets the first down for us. At least I'm pretty sure. Well, it was definitely a first down. I don't remember if it was second down or not. Not sure. Either way, good run from Kelly. We will try to follow that up. I really wish Lucas and Flanagan were switched here. So I am going to make a uh, change of play here. Because... I don't trust Lucas really running too many deep routes. His speed has cost us several times, so we'll just check down to a run and get it a few. And now we'll come out on second and 18. Going to change Jefferson's route to just shorten it up, basically. Try to see what we could get. Try to dump it off here. That's about as far downfield as I want Lucas going. <laughs> Only get a gain of two, however, on that catch. And on third and six. Titans come out with a double A-gap look here. We're going to bring our slant play. Step up in the pocket, try to scramble a little bit. Kind of slow on the run. But they give us the first down. And on first and goal from the nine. We'll come out in a heavy set here. Thurston comes out as well. Going to send him in motion. Try to follow behind him and some of our other blockers. Unfortunately, 58 does a really good job there of crowling Cook. Only gets a gain of, I think, two again. Try to follow that up here, except I'm going to have Lucas go on a delayed cross and then send Flanagan on an out route. Eh. Actually, no, let's go with an in as we send Thurston across here. And I'm just going to scramble here with Lucas. Seems like he's running a little gingerly, but hey, that's our first points. We'll keep an eye on him, make sure he doesn't have any injuries. But uh, we'll take that early points. We need a victory here today. Definitely coming off of that uh, tie game against the Lions. We at least have not lost to them yet, but that's as close as I want to come. And now our defense will take the field here, and they have a lot they need to do. Definitely number one being stopping Derrick Henry. One of our goals on the day is to keep him under four yards a carry. But they're going to find A.J. Brown, their other threat. And Tannehill is still, their, is still their quarterback, but he's wearing 13. That seems wrong to me. I don't remember him ever wearing 13. <laughs> and that pass should be counted as intentional grounding. And on second and 10 here, they're going to switch to a shotgun. Have two receivers to the left, one to the right. See what they do here with Derrick Henry. He's not, I'd say he's not much of a uh, receiving threat. He's a threat anytime he could get the ball. We get a quick tackle there with Harrison Smith, though. And on third and six, they come out with two tight ends to the uh, line, the right, two receivers over to the left. So if we're doing a lot of underneath passes, and that one, again, just thrown away. Our defense does a really good job that first possession for them, or for Tennessee Titans, and really just stopping them from doing anything. So we'll get back out here with our offense, try to drain some more clock, get some more points. And they're playing some off coverage here, so mostly just wanted to come out in that uh, play just to see what they kind of lined up at. 
I'm gonna run the ball here again, right down the middle. Cook not able to run over Bird or Bayard. I'm not exactly sure. And on third and one, I wanted to hand the ball off to Thurston, but for some reason, this formation doesn't have a fullback dive. Anytime you have a fullback out there, there should be a fullback dive. But it looks like we are gonna head into the second quarter here. First quarter is done. Game not too far separated, seven zip. We have our second possession ongoing. And I'm gonna come out here and run the same play. Actually, they have a lot of guys lined up to that right-hand side, so let's check to a run to the left. Follow behind Thurston again. Get the few yards we need. Actually, Cook gets quite a few more than just what we needed, but six yards, 50 on the day, or six yards, six carries, 50 on the day. Not too bad to start out. And I don't run a whole lot of screen plays here, so let's give it a try. And have a nice dump off there. A few blocks set up. Interesting juke move again to the opposite side that I tell him to, but we get a first down. So far, just playing pretty easy here today. Let's take a look over at Jefferson. He has the release, not much speed advantage, and we can't see Charks because Madden is broken. And no one really popped open when I was looking. I'm going to try to scramble forward to get a few out of bounds. Avoid taking a loss and just throwing it away. Going to get three yards with that Robinson scramble. However, after that, both him and Cook pretty tired. They have that little red icon. So we'll come in here, spell in Kelly, who just had open running range. Running range? Open running room. Brand is all over the place today. <laughs> Fantastic blocking up front. Another first down. And if I take a look here at the blocking up front, yeah, definitely have the advantage in the run blocking and even pass blocking as well. So we'll continue to utilize that. Try to get to some open range here again. Bayard, 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 Bayard. 31 safety. He took an interesting angle. Basically just ran right at our blocker and left wide open space for Kelly to get that first down. After a couple runs here, let's go with a play action. Look for maybe Jefferson deep or Leach underneath. And Leach is where we're going. Throw him open a little bit away from 37 and solid reception. Just taking what they're giving us right now. That's four for four on the day for your new quarterback. And we'll follow up going back to the run here. Especially with us having the advantage for the most part. Oh, then Kelly just ran right over Jewel. Like, right over him. There was not really even an animation for it. He just hit the ground come out here for a pass they did a nice job covering that we're gonna have Justin Jefferson one hand snag over in the corner didn't need to make it so fancy but we did gonna raise this score up to 14 to zip with a made extra point so far all going well for the Vikings in today's game we had two offensive possessions two touchdowns defense only had one Time to go out there, three and out. Although here, they get a pretty good job getting the a few yards here for Henry. Gain a six on first down. And once again, our whole goal for our defense was to limit his carries to being less than four yards per carry, which so far I think we're sitting at three and that one's picked off Eric Kendricks. That was just thrown straight to him. He's just gonna celebrate by doing a little, a little worm arm wave action. I can't even remember what that's called. I should remember what it is. And I always like to take a shot right after getting a... It's really any sort of turnover. So I'm honestly looking for Flanagan here. We'll see what the safety does. They're actually going to have quite a few guys on. And we're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Jefferson, touchdown! We go the other direction. Jefferson says, I need some touchdowns. I've been kind of absentee for a bit this year. And he's going head, shoulders, knees, and toes into the end zone. And you know, for the majority of the season prior to this game, it's been fairly inconsistent, a little rocky at times, but today, pretty smooth sailing, and that one could have been picked off again if Kendricks just turned around. And with us being up three scores, kind of makes them focus a bit on the passing game, which is going to limit the effect, at least in terms of straight rushing that Derrick Henry has. However, if they get the ball to him like that, he'll make some, he'll make some plays. I'm going to try to limit his plays in the passing game by 
just running some some man coverage make sure we have at least one guy on him and he just destroyed Harrison Smith he got punched into the next millennia but he did bounce right back up and go get the tackle so got to give Harrison Smith some credit there and he gets right in and gets the sack he makes up for it he made up for it and they're running some hurry up offense here we're gonna bring the blitz again to Neil Hunter off the edge gets home we're trying to make this a blowout victory here today. Let's celebrate after a uh, unfortunate tie against the Lions. And I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking if we could get a 28-point lead, I might sub in some of our younger guys, especially the linebacking spot for the second half, as we're just going to throw that one away. Good coverage downfield. And I almost forgot to say... The Dyson is back. He's recovered from his injury, and we're going to give him some play time here today. Try to use his speed to get around the edge here. Just needs to get by 37, which he does, and gets out of bounds. And it's a great way for him to face a little bit of his fear, as that is the same play that he got injured on against, I think it was the Rams. So we want to get him out there, get him some touches, get him back going. He had a pretty good showing before he got injured, and then he ended up missing a few weeks as... Cook, it's a really good block. Not able to really get free, though, as it kind of sucked us into that animation. But either way, still really good. See if we could draw down that safety. Going to slide over the offensive line to the left as it looks like they're going to be bringing a safety blitz. No, they drop out of it. And that'll be a sack. I'll take one timeout, though. Second and 20. I'll give it another try here if we don't get too much. Perfectly fine going into halftime up 21. I don't think anyone's ever complained about going into halftime up by 21 points. And then almost a fantastic grab there from Flanagan. I tried to loft it over the guy, but obviously didn't work. <laughs> and on third and 20, I'm going to check Dalvin to a late release here. And I would be looking for Flanagan, but they do a nice job of really cutting him off. Chart gets the catch, but not for much. Or at least, not enough for a first down. And we will attempt to have this punt just drain the rest of the clock here. So let's just try to bund it deep. See what Hernandez can do. Pretty good punt. Just want to make sure the clock is at zero. We'll get the tackle. We're heading to halftime up 21. Would have been nice to get that 28, but we won't be too greedy here. And as the boys head into the locker room, take a quick look at the stats. And we've allowed 29 yards on defense. That's really good. Taking a look around the league, though, we see the Chiefs get a victory over the Patriots, 35-21. Chiefs 7-3 on the season. Patriots drop to 4-6. And one of our rivals, the Lions, especially this season, they lose. So a win here would definitely be big for us. They drop a game 31-15 against San Francisco. And we're going to jump to that one screen that has all the other games. Yep. Green Bay Packers have yet to play. So don't know that score. Chicago destroys the Jets 42-13. All of that over in the bottom right-hand corner. But so far here today, we're just celebrating football and having a nice prime time victory. At least, knocking on wood, that's what it looks like. We're going to start the second half on defense up 21-0. And I'm going to sub in some of our linebackers. And of course, again, I forgot to uh, hit unpause after <laughs> making the changes to our defense. So, I'll just kind of run through that after this play. You really didn't miss much. Just a few few plays, really. I mean, they've been running the ball, so clock has been just draining. But at linebacker, Brooks and Hilton are out in the nickel. And then Hawkins, our rookie uh, linebacker, is also out in the base formation. Though, they got a nice job there. We brought the double A-gap blitz, and they just blocked it perfectly. And then we made another change up front. Graves back at DT as we brought in Calhoun, one of our young edge rushers. Just want to see what these guys have, really. Uh, missed the tackle there with Hilton. But prior to that, Hilton's actually been playing pretty well. A few uh, solo tackles in, close to the line of scrimmage, if not in the backfield, on uh, Derrick Henry. So 
he's definitely more of the run stopper rather than like a do it all kind of backer but that that's definitely Alex Brooks Alex Brooks is the do it all backer and most likely Brooks will be a starter for us next or full-time starter for us next year he plays a uh, starter but more in a situational situational starter I guess closest way to uh, describe it basically just in a 4-3 he comes out as one of the starting backers but in any nickel which you play most of the time in Madden he's uh, not one of the starters and now that we go to one of our goal line defenses here, you can see Hawkins is coming in. He's technically coming in for Kendricks in the base formations. And there's Hilton again making a nice stop around the line of scrimmage. He's definitely one who is pushing to possibly start over maybe Kendricks next year, depending on how that regression hits him. But most likely we will be needing to replace at least one, if not two, of our linebackers next year. So in a way, you could kind of think this is like the last two raw for the main core of who we think of as the Vikings, at least in real life, as Tennessee gets their first points on the board with a field goal with Carlson, a former Minnesota Viking. He wasn't really with us for long, but he was with us. <laughs> you know, when I think of current Minnesota Vikings who are still even on this roster, I mean, obviously you have Cook who's one of the main guys, especially on offense, as well as Justin Jefferson. But besides those two, I think the only other guy who's still here is Derisaw and Nwongwu. Oh, and then there is Kellen Mund, who is our backup quarterback. But besides that, we've kind of replaced just about everybody. Uh, we do have O'Neal on the offensive line. So that we have two guys from our offensive line that are still there as Leach heading down the sideline being chased by a few guys. But I would say for the most part, at least half, if not a little bit more, of our offense has been completely built in this universe and is strictly this universe. Is that one good job by number 26 who came crashing back? I thought that would have been an easy touchdown, but clearly I was wrong. We'll go back to the running game as that uh, typically is the best for facing against this team, really, against the Titans in this universe. Which is always a fun thing about Madden and franchise. It's different for everyone who plays. As end of the third quarter, we're going to head into the, head into the fourth. 21-3. And at the 21-yard line here, going to go for a play-action rollout. So we're going to have Flanagan come all the way across underneath. Have a few different options. Going to throw Leach back inside, and he's into the end zone. A fantastic play from Robinson. Rolling out, throwing it back across his body, throwing Leach open. And Leach finds the little gap at the goal line and is in. We're going to widen this lead 28-3. I mean, just look at that. Across body, a nice adjustment from Leach. Chark holds off Farley just long enough. I mean, all around, great job. And as the defense comes out, continuing in that same kind of line of thought that we were just talking about with the offense, in terms of actual current Vikings who are even still here, the defense has seen the most overhaul. Now, obviously, we still have a few of the original guys like Pierce and Hunter up front, and then we still have Kendricks at linebacker as they get another good catch here to number 12, miss a few tackles, but tell you what, Hilton, he gets the tackle. We at linebacker, we have technically two current guys, although we've moved Harrison Smith down to linebacker, and we still have Eric Kendricks. On the outside, we don't have any of the same original cornerbacks, and the rest of the safeties all new. So we really just have a handful of guys, and after this year, most of them will be gone, if not just not starting, maybe move to a backup role. So I'd say this is definitely kind of the last hoorah season of our real life Minnesota Vikings because after this year there's not going to be a whole lot they're going to get a nice play there on the quick pass on the slant to Edwards just got past the safety there now they're coming out in an empty set I'm going to take control of Brooks here is technically supposed to be over here <laughs> and almost gets the pick with Brooks at least broke it up so yeah, a lot changing in this offseason will definitely be one that will kind of shape the future of this team. And an awful pass. I don't know what Tannehill was doing there. But yeah, this offseason will definitely shape the future of this series as 
a lot will change, especially up front on defense. At least we hope. Because we need to get younger as we have a lot of guys who are just regressing right now. And a nice catch. A.J. Brown diving one-handed. Not going to be enough for a first down, though. However, they will go for it here. I'm going to switch over to Brooks as I like to go to that uh, wider gap side when I bring my blitzes. And they're going to go for a, a pitch to the outside. Hilton there again. And he gets the tackle. I tell you what, Hilton is one of those that definitely plays well above what his overall is. Unfortunately for the Titans, Lewan gets shaken up on that play. And it looks serious as he's heading into the locker room. Hopefully he doesn't end up missing too much time. I'm not sure. I don't remember what the Titans ra uh, ratings win-loss were going into this game. But hopefully not, uh, not a bad injury and isn't the end of anything for him. Our offense will take over, though, after that stop. Hard to uh, celebrate when there was an injury on the field, but still a great stop there for one of our young backers. So we're going to try to roll out here. And that was not where I thought Flanagan was going to be. <laughs> uh, I will jump into an instant replay and show this real quick, but not, either way, nice pick by Barry. So obviously not a good throw, but this is what I was thinking. So obviously I'm, I'm set about ready to throw. And at this point, I hit the button. And right now, Flanagan is chilling behind Baird, kind of just wide open. I wanted him to throw it here to this open area where possibly Baird could still get it, just knock it away. Instead, as soon as I go to throw the ball, Flanagan starts running back towards the line, which is the opposite, obviously, of what we would want as Baird is right there. So yeah, easy pick, unfortunate situation. That's not one that I would put on Robinson, nor would I put that one on Flanagan, or on Flanagan. I wouldn't put that on Flanagan, or Saunders is what I was meaning to say, but uh, that's just a Madden thing. Madden being Madden there, as they get a few here on their first down pass. And I'm curious as to you, if you play Madden, what positions do you think are the easiest to make a player into a superstar, really? I've always seemed to find really good linebackers who at least play well. Their ratings don't always have them be super highly rated. Like, their overalls typically aren't that great. But they always seem to find ones who play really well for me. As we're going to run into some man coverage here. They'll get the comeback, but he had to go back. Makes another guy miss, so it doesn't matter that he had to come back. He still gets the first down. Nice job, number 12. I feel like I always typically find some good linebackers and at least one good safety. Corners, I think for me, have been the hardest to really get any sort of superstars as Madden just not that good, obviously, as we could see here. A.J. Brown made everyone miss and somehow didn't end up in the end zone. They'll say he was all but in the end zone as this ball is basically placed on the goal line here. So we're going to send a blitz and 12 will get it instead. 12 has also had a pretty good game, so that's fine. And somehow the... Titans just won an onside kick, even though I didn't touch the ball and it did not go 10 yards. Explain that, Madden. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're back on defense. Madden being Madden again. You know, it's always... It's fun playing sports games, because you get to like build your own universe in a way with your own special players, but at the same time, it's so frustrating playing sports games. <laughs> Because they're always just so broken. Daniel Hunter, though, in to get another sack. Only his 10th of the season. I say only. We're in game or week 11. So he's had a, basically a sack a game. Which is really good. But in uh, obviously the first season we had where he had like 20, 30 some odd sacks. It was just insane. And because of that season now, I think we're kind of like, oh, he just had 10. <laughs> But then you play with some other guys and they have like six and a half max a season. It's it's funny. That's the fun part about sports, though. And that also kind of brings up another question. Are you a stats guy or are you more, uh, I, I say guy, obviously loosely, a stats person? Hilton almost had the pick there. Ends up dropping it, unfortunately. But yeah, are you a, a stats person or do you just kind of go with how they look on the field, really? So... I kind of go as they're going deep. Ward almost tips that one away, but a great catch, number eight. But I think uh, a great way to tell if someone is a stats person or not 
as we almost get there with Graves, is if they like Kirk Cousins or if they don't. Because obviously the big kind of argument between people who like Kirk and who don't like Kirk is his stats. And typically he has pretty good stats as we get the pick with Henley. Yes, we do. Kind of looked like he was going to drop it, but no, Rookie gets the pick. His first of the season, I think, so first of his career. And that will help just put the nail in the coffin of this game. But yeah, like I said, Kirk, the argument is always stats. He has pretty good stats, but we don't get the wins, so who do you blame? A lot of people try to blame defense, and don't get me wrong, the defense has definitely let us down more than one time, but... I wouldn't say I'm necessarily a stat guy, and I'm not necessarily a Kirk guy either, so I just feel like that's a, an argument that kind of splits people. It's stats versus how they look on the field. I prefer how they look on the field. But granted, not trying to start any Kirk wars in the comment section. Keep it clean, keep it nice. You can still have a discussion about it, obviously. But Kirk, not here anymore, obviously, was the first thing that we did was to get rid of him. And we're going to get rid of a sour feeling in our mouth with the... Uh, tie to the Lions with a victory here today as we kind of just just easily come with this one easy come like I mean nothing was nothing was too difficult in this one an easy game for us didn't have to fight at the end like we've had to do so many times this season big plays made around the just all the way around even the Titans had a few really good plays we just weren't able to put them together to really make much here so we will walk out victorious here they did have some good passing games obviously a little bit better than ours rushing game we completely took that one away fantastic job by the run stoppers for our defense and really proud of uh, kind of the bounce back that we had here and with that pick to help seal that game up Terrell Henley also going to get an upgrade here as we're going to just go with hybrid. I like hybrid safeties. I also with strong safeties like them to be able to hit as well. So he'll get the plus two to awareness and then plus one for man coverage, play rec, and tackle. If you're curious about where he stands his next game, we should reveal what his uh, hidden development is. But this is what his ratings are at. Definitely a bit more of a hitter than cover guy, honestly. If we take a look at his size, if he weighed maybe about 20 pounds more, he would be the ideal linebacker for us as the similar kind of style to many of our linebackers. But need to work a little bit on the cover stats with him, but we definitely primarily use him down towards the line. And one last thing before we wrap this up, need to take a look to see what we learned from some of these uh, focus scouting guys. So Gabe Wilds did go up from, I think it was 50 to 80. So we now know he is a power lineman. And we'll take a look at what all that means for us. So I'm seeing a lot of A's. Also some C's in there. But A pass block power, A run block finesse, A run block power, A lead block, A pass block. He does have C pass block finesse and C stamina with B awareness. So I think he would be an ideal candidate for us to draft and to take over for DeCastro. For sure. If he's available second round, I th honestly, I don't remember now if we have a second round pick. If we don't, we might need to move some things around. I believe we have two firsts, but might not have a second. I don't remember <laughs> exactly, but either way, Gabe Wilds is definitely going to be a target of ours for sure, as he would fill in that role, I believe, would be really well. And then we need to take a look to see if we learned anything about Kevin Hatchett. I don't think we did he's at 75 percent and then we have a few others who are also a 75 percent just in case though we'll see here beef block shedding a power moves a pursuit b play rec does have f stamina and then c hit power and block uh, impact block still think he'd be a solid guy to pick up especially on the outside we might be needing both the outside guy and an inside guy varies a little bit on what we end up doing most particularly with uh, Michael Pierce but still want to try to get both stay ahead of that curve and it doesn't look like we learned anything from Bryce Steffens he's still a 50 percent so yeah it doesn't look like there's anything new I really just need to know what that block shedding rating is and if he has some power moves as well fantastic because if I remember correctly he's a pretty strong guy yeah great to elite 
Also the biggest guy on the defensive line in this class, 6'6", 317. Really hope he's a good run stopper. Help us kind of spread out some of our picks a bit. Uh, but that is all I wanted to throw in the end here to wrap out that uh, focus scouting that we did at the beginning. Now this next week is a big game. San Francisco, obviously we know they just beat, I believe it was the, the Lions they just beat. I was trying to remember back to what happened at halftime, and we technically have a, a better record than them, but only by half a game. They're 7-3, and three, pretty similar overall. Their defense is definitely their best. Our offense is our best. So we're going to have some guys we're going to need to shut down. George uh, George Kittle, you see at the bottom. I'm assuming they still have Debo in this universe. So a big game coming up next. You guys are going to need to make sure you stick around as this is a close knit race here for the NFC North with the top three teams all being pretty close. I mean, you can even say all four. We have seven wins. The Lions and Bears have six and the Packers have five. So if we slip up and either one of those teams get gain some momentum, we lose first place here in the NFC North. So a lot to happen for the remainder of this season. And if you guys haven't checked out the other series that we have going on, the California Only Rebuild, Featuring Stanford as they're my favorite college team. I suggest you guys check that out. It is very fun as uh, building a team completely of players who played at a school at in California. So Cal, USC, UCLA, San Jose State, San Diego State. All of those, those are the only players we could use. And we're trying to win a Super Bowl. We are starting season two very shortly or maybe have by the time this goes up. So make sure you guys check that out. It's really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you're enjoying this, and we'll see you next time. Bye.